I'd like to thank the organizers of this meeting for inviting me to present a debrief of abstracts on hepatocellular carcinoma presented at the American Association for the Study of Liver Disease Liver Meeting 2020. My name is Dr. Denise Harnoy. I'm a professor of medicine and hepatologist at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. I have no disclosures. I'd like to acknowledge sincere appreciation to the presenters who graciously made their presentations available for inclusion in this review. The abstracts that I will discuss address fundamental and important questions in clinical practice, both current and future state. They are from clinical and basic research abstracts presented throughout the program The first abstract looks at pathogenesis. This abstract, the molecular and mutational landscape of hepatocellular cancer related to non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, was presented at Parallel Session 16 by the authors reviewed below. This looked at the genetic landscape of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis associated hepatocellular tumors and it evaluated the whole exome sequencing of both the tumor and the adjacent tissue. Four genes were identified as altered in at least 10% of tumors. When compared with viral and alcohol-related hepatocellular cancers, they observed similar mutation rates in the most frequently altered genes, except for two, TP53 and ACVR2A. Specifically, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis associated hepatocellular cancer patients presented with significantly higher ACV R2A mutations and trended toward lower TP53 mutations when compared to HCCs from other etiologies. Next, in order to identify mutational signatures underlying the pattern of NASH-associated HCC mutations, they conducted a de novo extraction strategy to obtain a spectrum of mutational signatures in NASH-HCC as compared with viral and alcohol-related HCC cases. Among these signatures, the most prevalent was the mutation signature 16, which was equally distributed among the NASH and viral alcohol HCC cases. The mutation signature 24, shown in dark blue, was found exclusively in the viral alcohol-related HCC cases. And a de novo signature 2, shown in light blue, not previously reported, was found significantly enriched in the NASH cases. They hypothesized that it could be specific to a NASH insult and named it Mutation Signature NASH HCC. They identified a novel mutation signature which was associated with the tumors of NASH etiology in 16% of cases as opposed to 2% of HCCs which were from other etiologies. They also looked to address the issue of the impact of cirrhosis on the mutational landscape of NASH-associated HCC, finding that in non-cirrhotic patients displayed a higher significantly number of mutations compared to the cirrhotic patients. They also presented a lower prevalence of a damaging homozygous GG variant of an already described PNPL3A polymorphism which was associated with a more pronounced decrease in mitochondrial function and DNA repair. So the key takeaways from this abstract were that NASH-associated hepatocellular tumors presented with specific genomic features including high frequency of ACV R2A mutations, a low frequency of TP53 mutations, and the presence of a novel mutation signature NASH HCC. NASH alone promoted a cancer field in non cirrhotic HCC patients compared to the ones with cirrhotic NASH HCC association. 
Overall, this study provides novel insights into the NASH HCC molecular pathogenesis that may aid in the discovery of novel treatments for the disease and improve future patient management. Now that l let's look at abstracts that focused on the issue of diagnosis. The first was presented by Dr. Tang, representing his colleagues as reviewed below. This was an autonomic hepati automatic hepatocellular carcinoma detection in non-contrast and venous computed topography CT of cirrhotic patients, a three-dimensional deep learning based approach. Multi-phase CT scans are typically used for HCC detection, looking at non-contrast phase, arterial phase, portal venous phase, and then a delayed phase of imaging. But in many patients, contrast enhancement or use of contrast isn't possible. This could be because the patients have worsening renal dysfunction, it could be because they have a contrast allergy, or it may be that these patients have a non-contrast imaging study performed for another reason. And so this study looked at trying to improve the HCC detection of these dynamic CT scans when arterial contrast was not utilized. And they asked the question if the automatic deep learning system assisted in non-contrast and venous contrast only CT scans could improve HCC findings. Retrospectively, they collected and reviewed 995 CT studies with pathology proven HCCs from 2008 until 2017. Their control were 61 imaging study CT scans obtained from trauma victims without evidence of liver injury. What they were able to demonstrate through model performance was a specificity of 97% for non-contrast venous and non-contrast plus venous phase CT scans. Sensitivity went from 65 to 78% and the accuracy, 78% in the non-contrast studies, 82% in the venous phase studies, and when both were combined, non-contrast and venous phase, 85% accuracy. The key takeaways from this abstract were that hepatocellular cancer can be detected in non-contrast phase CT scans using their model. The detection rate was boosted in images which also included a venous phase. Further clinical trials are necessary in order to fully evaluate this model and its utility in clinical practice. Now let's focus on the issue of treatment strategies. One abstract presented by Dr. Lin and colleagues looked at the Barcelona Clinic Liver Cancer Substage of Advanced Hepatocellular Cancer and looked to provide a greater accuracy towards precision medicine in the utilization of this substaging system for hepatocellular cancer management. The study aimed to develop a practical substaging system for BCLCC specifically which is a heterogeneous group of patients with prognostic variability in order to try to tailor therapy and better predict survival. Three cohorts were used to assess. First was a Taiwan training cohort, 622 patients. There's a Taiwan validation cohort, 774 patients. And an international validation cohort, from Stanford and the Mayo Clinic within the United States and also included patients from Japan and Korea for a total of 460 patients. Their proposed substaging system for Barcelona Clinic Liver Cancer Stage C was to look at risk factors for substaging. One, tumor size greater than or equal to 10 centimeters. 2. Evidence of extrahepatic spread. 3. Macular invasion. 4. Child Pew Class B. 
So a C0 substage system would have no tumor risk factors and age less than 75 years. C1, again no tumor risk factors but age greater than or equal to 75 years. C2 would have one of the four liver risk factors. C3, two of the four liver risk factors. And C4 could have three or four of the liver risk factors. This demonstrates the variability that we see in overall survival in the training cohort, in the Taiwan validation cohort, in the international validation cohort, and the total cohort together when the patients are divided out through the substaging of the BCLCC. C0 represented in blue, C1 represented in red, C2 represented in green, C3 in black, and C4 in purple. And you can see the variability of survival based on the substaging system. They then look to take this substaging system and look to see how these patients might best be managed in terms of their treatment. They looked specifically at the issue of surgery and RFA versus transarterial chemoembolization versus systemic therapy. Now it's important to understand that the systemic therapy utilized in these patients was serafinib and other studies would be needed to look at some of the newer agents that are now being utilized in the management of hepatocellular cancer patients with systemic therapies. Their proposed treatment strategy for BCLCC HCC patients was that if patients had C0 with no risk factors in age less than 75, they had a prognosis survival of 39 months. For these patients, they recommended surgery, RFA, or transarterial chemoembolization. For the C1 patients, those with no risk factors but age greater than 75 years or equal to 75 years, their survival was 21.5 months. Again, they recommended surgery, RFA, or transarterial chemoembolization therapy. For those that had C2, which was one out of four risk factors, they had a survival of 9.8 months overall, and they recommended that you could consider surgery, RFA, or TACE in some of these patients, but some of these patients may also be good candidates for more systemic therapies. C3, two of the four risk factors with an average overall survival of 5.1 months. Again, surgery, RFA, TACE, or systemic therapies. And C4 with three or four risk factors had an average survival of 3.3 months. These patients they recommended for systemic therapies. Again, the systemic therapy utilized in this circumstance was serafinib therapy, and so the application of this to the newer therapies would need to be further assessed in future studies, and the authors acknowledged this in their presentation. Additionally, looking at this issue of uh, diagnosis or treatment strategies and stratifications was the presented by Dr. Yuta Mayujin looking at serum ST6 GAL1 as a novel biomarker for predicting efficacy of tyrosine kinase inhibitors in hepatocellular carcinoma. This abstract looked at a new in vivo screening model. To generate liver tumor model mimicking tumor heterogeneity, they cloned various oncogenes. Ten clinically relevant HCC oncogene cDNAs were individually cloned and injected into the tail vein of mice. Surprisingly, 14 days after injection, multiple liver nodules formed within the liver. Proportion of the tumors with each cDNA was calculated, and the proportion of tumor cells with FGF19 cDNA was significantly reduced in those mice treated with levatinib therapy. This means that the FGF19-driven tumors were susceptible to levatinib. Next, they examined tumor-derived secreted proteins. 
In order to identify serum biomarkers for the FGF19 driven hepatocellular cancers, they identified six proteins whose expression was decreased when the FGF19 was silenced by cyRNA. And the expression of the CT6GAL1 was most correlated with FGF19 expression in hepatoma cell lines mRNA and TCGA database. On the other hand, serum ST6GAL1 levels were significantly higher in patients with FGF19 high HCCs than in those with FGF19 lower HCCs. In addition, patients with the FGF19 high HCCs were identified with high sensitivity and specificity using a cutoff serum ST6GAL1 value of 19.1 nanograms per milliliter determined by the index. And based on their experimental evidence showing high levatinib susceptibility of FGF19 driven HCCs, they hypothesized that a baseline serum ST6GAL1 level would be a useful biomarker for the prediction of levatinib susceptibility in HCC patients. To further test this hypothesis, they examined pretreatment serum ST6GAL1 levels in 96 advanced HCC patients who later underwent either levatinib or serafinib treatment and analyzed the association with prognosis. The patient background information is shown on the table on the left, and it is, there is no difference in the serum ST6GAL1 levels or overall survival between the levatinib-treated and the serafinib-treated patients. They then divided the patients into ST6GAL1 high and ST6GAL1 low groups based on the cutoff serum, ST6GAL1 level, used to identify FGF19 high HCCs. Among 62 HCC patients with low serum ST6GAL1 levels, overall survival was not different between the levatinib-treated patients and the serafinib-treated patients. However, in the 34 HCC patients with high serum ST6GAL1 levels, levatinib-treated patients showed a significantly longer overall survival than the serafinib-treated patients. Taken together, their clinical observations suggested that the ST6GAL1 may be a useful marker in selecting HCC patients for whom levatinib therapy will provide better benefit and overall survival to serafinib therapy. There was really a number of remarkable abstracts that were presented at this meeting and so I could only provide a small snippet of the valuable ones that were thrown shown throughout the program. I hope that I've been able to find a provide a pro, an overview for these abstracts and appreciate your time and patience. Thank you.